Hi, I'm Kathy Cruz. I'm a retail coach, a retail store owner, and host of the Savvy Shopkeeper Retail Podcast. I personally know how busy shopkeepers are, so I like to keep podcast episodes short and sweet. These bite-sized podcast episodes, though, they're full of value because I want to help you work less, profit more, and grow your business. This short video introduction is going to be followed by a podcast episode, so feel free to multitask, especially if you have your AirPods in, but sometimes you're going to want to take notes. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you get notified every time I publish a new podcast episode or a new video. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Welcome to the Savvy Shopkeeper Retail Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Cruz. And I, it's like bittersweet. It's kind of sad today because today is the last interview for the Shopkeeper Story Series, at least for now. I have a feeling I'm going to bring this kind of interview style with group members back maybe more than once a year. But I am really happy to say that I have Christy Caddy here with me. Um, I'm really looking forward to catching up with her, to interviewing her. I have so many questions and before I hit the record button, I made sure not to ask her too much because I wanted to save it for the interview. Christy's been a master shopkeeper member since the beginning, hasn't it? I think it's been like two years. Yeah. When you put it out there, I think I was one of the first ones. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so Christy, before I say anything else, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about your store and how big it is and where it's located and all that good stuff. Okay, I'm Christy Caddy. My store is Miss Daisy's Home and Decor, and I'm located in Joplin, Missouri. And we specialize in new furniture and home decor, and we have some gifts and clothing as well. And tell everyone how big your store is. Oh gosh, it's like for like showroom space about 12,000 square feet. Yes, and I think that's really important. And we've had such a wide variety of people that we've interviewed in terms of like store size, and I just want the listeners to understand how big of a store you have. 12,000 square feet is incredible. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So first, I always like to start by asking you to tell me um, about your shopkeeping journey. And I know a little bit, but I would like to hear from like the beginning, what led you to actually open a store? What did you do before that? Why were you um, interested in opening a store? All of that. Okay. So I was a stay at home mom for 20 plus years and I had been painting furniture since, um, like for five or six years before I opened. And to be honest, I did not, I was in an antique mall and there were some issues with the store owner and I sold paint there. And I will be honest, I think they were a little jealous of my paint cells and one time on, when we were on vacation, I got my 30 day notice that they didn't want us as vendors. And we had one of the biggest spaces available. So, um, I came home and I just, I kind of stewed on that because like, I don't, I'm not a quitter and I did not want to be, I was at the point I was, I was done with them too, but I did not want them giving, firing me, if you will. And so I kind of entertained the idea of opening my own store. My husband and I had talked about it before and we thought it was too big of a risk or too time consuming of a risk. But I had also came off of a hard year of training for triathlons and cycling. And my coach is like, you really need to take a break. And so this was my break opening my own store. And, um, I don't know if it was truly much of a break because we probably put in more hours than I did training, but, um, here I am. <laughs> so give me a little bit of a timeline. Give me like what year when you were in, had the booth space, what year was that? Um, let's see, I should remember this. So it was actually, we, um, the year of our tornado, which is 10 years, this, year. So that was 2011. So I started Boost Space then um, that fall. And then I opened in 2006. So what is that? Five years? Yeah. Yeah. So I painted furniture, you know, we went to auctions and that's kind of how it started too, is we would go to auctions. Um, I love vintage Pyrex. 
and we get all this other stuff that we did not want. And it just, that kind of led, you know, to the whole booth thing. Mm -hmm. So, so the booth uh, was 2006 to 2011. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then Miss no, I'm sorry, 16. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. 2011. That's 2000, right. 2000, yeah. Sorry. That was my bad. <laughs> Yeah, so 2000, 2011 to 2016 was the booth, and then you opened Miss Daisy's in 2016. I did. Yes. Well, you know, I guess I didn't realize that because I've seen so much. I feel like I've seen so much of your journey. I can't wait for you to for us to move forward in this conversation because what you've accomplished in the past three years has been incredible. So, okay, let's move forward then. Okay. <laughs> so, and so going forward, so we opened our doors in 2000, October of 2016, um, with 4,000 square feet, uh, retail space. And, um, I had vendors, both consigners and booth space renters. And so that's October. And in February, we expanded four more thousand square feet. So, um, retail space there. And then in October of, oh my gosh, all these years, like two and a half years ago, we went to High Point Market for Furniture Market. And that's when I decided this whole vendor thing was not working out well. And it, it was, to be honest, vendors are, you've heard me complain before, but I could not deal with vendors. I had my own look. So we went to Furniture Market October a couple of years ago, started bringing in new furniture, um, we met Ben and Aaron Napier of hometown and that really just kind of their story and our story. There's just so much similarity that I just, we just started bringing in a new furniture and it just expanded into all new furniture. So um, I vendors started leaving because I raised our rent up and it was just, it's, I don't look, you know, I just look forward. I, this is like the best place. Also, there's nowhere else like us in our area, like to buy new furniture. And, um, I don't, I, I don't know. It just happened. It really just happened. Yeah. So let's, let's go back. You don't, okay. give, you don't give yourself enough credit. And I say that because I've seen so much of this. So I remember, um, early on, even pre master shopkeepers, I remember either posts or conversation. And I just want to say that vendor type businesses, that's ideal for the person that really loves to work with other people and manage other people. And that's the one thing that some members in both the lab and master shopkeepers have to learn on their own. Do they want to manage people or do they want to manage inventory? Essentially. I mean, it's yeah. not that clearly defined. And some people start with the vendor type business and realize that they don't want to manage that many people, especially it's, if it's a vendor, if it's a large vendor space and you're managing, you know, we have one group member who manages 200 vendors in their store. So yeah, it's, it, it really has to be a good fit for the business owner. And I think what you realized was it wasn't a good fit for you. It is a good fit for some people, but it wasn't a good fit for you. And I remember you struggled with that. I think part of it was you were supporting other people that were essentially running their own businesses. So that was a struggle, the struggle of like trying to figure out how to ask them to leave so that you can start to fill the space because you had a vision all along for your business and for your space. And you really wanted to just kind of take over the entire, whatever it was, 4,000 or 8,000 square feet at the time and make it your own. And that's exactly what I've seen you do, but I'm so curious. So you know, eventually the vendors started to, to leave. What were the things that you were doing? Because I'm sure there are some people who are listening, some shopkeepers who are listening, who are like, oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. How did you even begin to maybe grasp the, the amount of inventory that you had to bring in? How many markets do you go to? How do you fill such a big space? Where do we begin? Let me go back to the vendors. Okay. How did you even begin other than the high point market, which, which was a great inspiration for you? Was there anything else that you did that helped? Um, like get started with the new stuff? No, I just like, I started, well, to be honest, I raised my vendor's rent. So I would, didn't have to necessarily give them notice to move out. And then once I started ordering stuff, 
like, if you didn't know, I have this little addiction to ordering, like that's like the most, most favorite part, I think. Um, but it just started coming in and I don't, it just started evolving from, I realized we couldn't with the new stuff have antiques per se, because or pain and stuff because people did not it, the perceived value of the new and the repurposed did not match up. So like they would want a brand new thing for what they could get a repurposed piece of furniture for. So, but I just started ordering things. Um, as you know, I did not pay myself for a long time and all my money, I just kept turning it back into inventory. And I think I, I love that I started out the way I did just bootstrapping, you know, being debt free. But I, when I would sell something, I would turn that right back into more inventory. And then it would, it, it just kind of kept coming. And that's, um, my husband tells me that I took a lot more risk than he probably would have. And I really did not know I was a risk taker, if you will, until all of this to all of the new stuff, really, but I am a risk taker. Like even to this day, I have ordered something, including this morning, I ordered a few things that I probably, I'm a little nervous about, if you will, but usually I know what it is I want to order and I feel very comfortable going forward with it. And if it doesn't sell, then we'll discount it and move on. So I am thrilled that you said that because I was really hoping that would come out during this conversation because I do sometimes you're so modest and so humble you all you're also very cautious about celebrating your wins in master shopkeepers you have a little more this year than you ever have before and I, I uh, I'm happy that you do that you know, it's nice for us to inspire each other and see what we're all capable of, or, or even like the motivation, but for sure the inspiration. And you can really be inspiring to some of the smaller spaced shopkeepers. You for sure take risks. <laughs> I do. And you, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I think that I, this just came to me recently that I think sometimes I used to kind of think I was just playing with monopoly money, if you will, like, and that was easier to, you know, being a risk taker, if you will, because it wasn't necessarily my money, but it truly was, it's, it's you know, tied to my name, but, um, I enjoy taking risk. Oh, good for you. I, I even love that. You're like owning it. You're like, yes, I'm a risk taker. <laughs> So I want to cover two things that you mentioned too about, or, I mean, even like risk taking, because, you know, I talk about in, in episodes or in the groups, I, I just posted it the other day about fear, fear can hold us back. Was there ever a point where you feel like you did over order where you had too much inventory or did the revenue really start to flow in relation to the inventory that was coming in? Uh, a little bit of both. There was times my whole back space, which I don't have a lot of space for inventory really. Um, in fact, I bought some containers and now I have warehouse space, which that was a huge thing, but I did, there was a couple of times, you know, it's been slower and it made me nervous. Like, did I do the right thing? But I just put out there the number that I want to hit and I push forward no matter what I have. I mean, like, I don't really like Facebook lives, but if we need to make a lot of sales, then I will do a Facebook live. And that brings people in new people that we don't even see. So, um, I think that, yes, I've had times where I've been nervous with the whole inventory thing right now. I have more inventory than I've ever had. Um, but I'm not nervous. I'm just, we're going to sell. I mean, things have really picked up. Our April was the biggest we've ever had. And I've never had a good April. Like April for us is usually, and April is the best month that we've had. Yes, we have more square footage too, but um, it was considerably bigger. And it just, I feel very blessed. And I know I've worked hard to get here. And sometimes that is hard for me to say that because that is a win too. But um, I, I don't know. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Is the warehouse space in addition to the 12,000 square feet that you have? Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's off site. So, I mean, I have two warehouse guys. We have four storage containers out our back door too, but like, um, so like when you, the containers that our stuff comes over, that's kind of what I have, um, which was great in the beginning, but they're just, they weren't functional for what we need for furniture. So, so yeah, so now, and I have four storage containers and warehouses. <laughs> okay. And I just want to stress too, for people that are trying to wrap their brains around this, when Christy says she's a furniture store, she's legitimately a furniture yeah. store, full bedroom sets with beds and dressers and full dining room sets, full living room ensembles, like everything. So I want to make sure that I convey that because for some of us who might be gift shops or small home decor items, we're like, oh my God, how do you even begin to fill a space with that much? So a couple questions what do you do or what are some of the things that you do to clear out that merchandise when you're starting to, you know, really see that the back stock is filling up with either older merchandise or overstocked items? Um, we'll put a, a few things on sale if they have been here for a little bit. I do not like to have sales a lot because I don't want people just to shop me when we're having a sell. Um, I get a little backlash probably from employees and customers. Um, like, oh, when is your next sell? Well, we don't know. I mean, I'm not, we're not just having a sell because that's not what I want to do. So um, yeah, but we'll mark a few pieces down just to move them. Okay. No, that makes sense. And that that's good. It's the one thing that I say a lot. There are, you know, there are some group members who have, you know, actually recently just come out and said, like, I discount too much, or you get into this habit, or you feel you get into that like, scarcity mindset, and you feel like you have to, that's the only way people will shop with you, but they really won't. You don't have to offer nearly as many discounts as you think, especially an independent retailer. So I'm glad that you said that. And then the other thing too, is just because you keep growing, I'm sure some people are wondering, how do you get the foot traffic? You've already said that you really didn't have anything in your area. So of course you were covering, there was a need for your type of business in the area, but is there anything else um, that brings the foot traffic in? Any other efforts that you make in, that cause you to grow so much? Yeah, I do a lot of advertising um, and we're not, I mean, we're off the interstate. You can sort of see us from the interstate, but we're not in a high foot traffic area. Um, I will say that I have furniture row beside us and then a cracker barrel here. But other than that, there's like nothing. So I've had to bring people here through advertising, um, whether it's Facebook I do a lot of TV advertising and now we've branched into YouTube and a lot of digital ads, which don't even ask me about that. I have a marketing guy that helps me with that. So I just see what people are coming to us from that. Um, but yeah, I've spent a lot of money on advertising and I actually keep on doing it because I think staying in front of people it keeps you on their mind. I mean, I get new people every day and we do ask them like, Oh, how did you hear about us? And it's either word or mouth or one of our advertising and advertising. Are you doing social media? Are you doing billboards? Are you doing newspaper? Are you doing all of it? Are you, you know, what are you focusing on normally? Mostly TV and digital. Um, I've tried the billboard thing and that didn't for us, it did not work that well. It was just okay. You know, we, I didn't, Feel like I had a good return on my investment with that. We've tried newspaper a couple of times and I don't know that it, people really look at the newspaper much anymore, but our main source is digital. Um, we do some Facebook ads, Instagram. And are you doing, especially the commercials? Cause I'm sure, I think you're the first person I've, I think the first group member I've interviewed that has done, we have other group members who do TV commercials, but who handles that? Is it mostly the marketing agency that you work with that handles a lot of the coordinating and, and all of that? And I do, I will say anyone who wants to see these commercials or the quality of work or the quality of even imagery posts, you have to see Christie's Instagram or um, I always see it on Facebook. Make sure we'll, and we'll link it in the show notes and we'll talk about it at the end, but you have to visit her page because the quality, it's beautiful. Like it makes you want to go shop at the store, but they handle all of that. 
uh, they handle our ads, making our ads. And then I have a news rep with the TV station who I deal with her because she always gives me a good deal. And um, so, but they do all of our videos and any of the commercial shoots. And I actually, one of my employees, I always say one of my girls because everybody thinks they're all my kids or whatever, but I have one of my girls. She just, that's her thing. She does our Facebook, Instagram, our social media. And I handing that off, it's not easy for me to handle things. You know, I like to have control. I am a little bit of a control freak and probably have in my own store. I've realized that, but I do have a girl that does all of our social media for us. Yeah. You, you really are amazing. Just everything that you've said, I'm sure there are some listeners who are going to be impressed with everything that you've accomplished. And again, you don't, you're so humble and so modest. So I appreciate you sharing all of this, or even that, you know, you're, you have the courage to work with a a marketing firm or an agency. You have the courage to reach out to a local TV station to coordinate and make TV commercials. Those are all pretty big moves for small independent retailers. So thank you for sharing that. Um, So I just want to shift a little bit because you have been a group, you've been in master shopkeepers. I mean, you've been part of savvy shopkeeper for a long time And when you joined, you know, you said you jumped on it and I appreciate it, but what keeps you in the group or is there anything that you've learned from being in the group that's been helpful to you? Um, Of course I like, you know, the whole group atmosphere where it's safe, we can talk about anything, but like the whole numbers situation. In fact, I, that's my goal coming up is I really need to focus on my numbers a little bit more. I mean, yes, I have money in my account, you know, we're growing and, but I need to focus more. And I, um, and that's what scares me too. It's like, not like I keep putting off all this stuff, but that's, I need to know like where I'm at numbers wise, not just seeing I have X amount in my bank account. So, um, so I think it's very helpful being in there because there's all this stuff that, you don't know where to find. I mean, I'm a good Google person, but at the same time, who wants to go and do all of that? Yeah, no. And that's the rabbit hole I try to keep independent yeah. retailers out of. And I always say in the groups, in both groups, if you were looking for something specific or you wanted a specific lesson or answer or video lesson, like, let me know. I will point you in the right direction just because there is so much content. There's so much to either watch or read or another post that I can refer you to. So where do you see yourself in five years? Oh gosh. Well, I would love, um, I just signed for a three-year lease, but in five years, I would love to have my own location. So, and I want to be bigger. Um, and I'd like to have a second location too. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I still, I want to grow. I want to continue to grow. So Miss Daisy's will have a Miss Daisy's number two. Yes. Um, yeah. And eventually I would like to have Miss Daisy's on the Bay, but that's later on in life probably. So, um, yeah. (laughs) I love how big you dream. That's amazing. And I also love, I think it was, you know, I want to point this out too, because you mentioned it earlier is you didn't pay yourself for a long time, but you did start paying yourself last year. Right. Yeah. I think I remember, did you PM me? I remember you PM'd me or something and said, like, I paid, I paid myself. It was so celebratory. I loved it. (laughs) And I love, yeah, group members will do that. And because they know I'm going to be doing a happy dance for them. Yeah. And are you still consistently paying yourself? Is it, is it a payroll situation? Yeah. I pay myself every month. So, um, and I'm ready to give myself a raise. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) And we'll get to see each other in September at the retreats. I can't wait. I can't wait either. I was so excited. I have to tell everyone when Christy and I had not met, she had been in the group maybe a year and a half, and we both knew we would be at America's Mart. That was not this past year, it was the year before. We didn't know if we would see each other. We were going to try to meet up for like a happy hour. This was pre pandemic for sure. And we were both on the same floor as creative co-op, like in the hallway somewhere. And I think she was with her, you were with your sales rep, right? Yeah, I was in creative co-op doing my order. 
And I think we were getting ready to do our order. Maybe we were in the middle and we spotted each other and we screamed. <laughs> Two schoolgirls. It was so funny. I'll never forget that moment. But that just kind of signifies like how close we all become and how much fun we have. And it was the same when we just hopped on Zoom. It was the same kind of reaction. It's, it's I love it. I love it. <clears throat> yeah. So I would love for everyone to know now that I've talked about your social media feed and the quality of everything and the posts, and I'm sure people are anxious to see what the store looks like. This is another thing too, <clears throat> excuse me, that I, you know, we did not talk about. And I, I wonder who gets credit for this. I'm thinking it's you. Everything is beautifully merchandised. It's from the furniture to the decor, Everything is styled and merchandised so well. And then you see the images and you can just picture your whole room looking like that or your tablescape looking like that. Who gets credit for that? Uh, me and a couple of my girls. Um, so I choose everything. That's I, that's what I love the most. And so, and then I actually put one of my girls in charge of merchandising because she has a really good eye and well, I can't do everything. So, um, so I, she just, when it filled that role this year, maybe the end of last year, but I, so it's really good. We just, and I keep her in charge because even when you get new employees, sometimes they don't have that same vision that you do. And she's been with me a couple of years and we've just kind of, I turned it over to her. I mean, we all kind of spruce things up if you will, but it's kind of one person's job now, which kind of feels weird saying that, you know, just because I feel like that's like part of our growth, if you will. Yeah. When you grow that much and you, how many employees do you have? I have nine now. Yeah. So. When you grow that much and you have that many employees, you have to start to identify who's really good at what. And, you know, yeah. we've talked about this before in master shopkeepers too. let that one person focus on their strength. Yeah. And then, you know, identify what the strength is in the other person and then, you know, let them run with that. Give them the free, the creative freedom. You want creative freedom too. They normally want a little creative freedom as well. Yeah. It's helped definitely putting people in their places, like what they're good at, you know? So, because everybody's not good at helping customers, you know, you think that they are, but then when you sit back and watch, you realize that, I don't know. And I've really learned to start doing that, putting people where they're stronger. Yeah. So smart. Okay. So where can everyone find you? Um, on in Facebook, it's Miss Daisy's Home and Decor Co. And I think Instagram is Miss Daisy's Joplin. I mean, I don't even know. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is because I stalk all of you. <laughs> and what's the website? Do you have an online shop? Can people shop with you online? Do you ship yeah. that one? I don't know. We do ship. Um, it's not my favorite thing to do, um, but it, we do. And we also do these little daisy crates, like a little monthly subscription box. So yeah. And that's all at MissDaisy'sJoplin.com. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I know your Instagram more than you. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, I, you know, we had to reschedule this, unfortunately, and then we had to reschedule it again. You know, how much I was, how, how much I was looking forward to this conversation. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for telling everyone about your story and about your risk taking and how courageous you are. You know, I hope it inspires other people that my, you know, the fear might be holding them back to, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean that you have to open a 12,000 square foot store <laughs> with four containers and a warehouse space, but we can tackle fear a little bit at a time. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kathy. I enjoyed it. <laughs>